You must be Stanley. I'm Blanche. Oh, you're still sister. Yes. Oh, hi. Hey, where's the little woman? In, in the bathroom. Oh. Well, where are you from, uh, Blanche? Uh, I live in Oreo. Oreo. Oreo, huh? Oh, yeah, that's right, the Oreo. That's not my territory. Man, look, it goes fast in the hot weather. You want a shot? Uh, no, I, I rarely touch it. Well, there's some people that uh, rarely touch it, but it touches them often. Uh -huh. Hey, you mind if I make myself comfortable? My uh, shirt is sticking. Please, up. please do. Be comfortable. That's my motto, where I come from. It's mine, too. It's hard to stay looking fresh in hot weather. Why, well, I haven't washed or even powdered. Here you are. Well, you know, you gotta be careful. You're sitting around and damn thing gets you cold. Especially when you've been exercising hard like bowling is. Well, you're the uh, teacher, aren't you? Yes. What do you teach? English. Well, I never was better than any student. How long are you here for? Well, I don't know yet. You gonna shack up here? I thought I would if it's not inconvenient for you all. Mm. Traveling wears me out. Well, take it easy. <laughs> not those cats. Stanley Kowalski and Blanche Dubois, two of the most famous characters in contemporary American theater, written by playwright Tennessee Williams. Thomas Lanier Williams was born on March 26, 1911, by an alcoholic, womanizing father and a mentally disturbed, sexually repressed mother. He had an older sister, Rose, whom he was very close to. Her mental illnesses would later become the inspiration for many of his female characters. As Thomas grew up, his father Cornelius did not like that his son wasn't more robust. Instead of playing football, Tom would read poetry. His mother Edwina became very overbearing to him, not helping his issue with his father and being ridiculed at school by the other boys. His outlet for the anger and sadness he developed was writing. During high school, he started submitting essays to magazines and had his first essay published at the age of 16. Once he started attending the University of Missouri, he would enter essays, poetry, stories, and plays in writing contests, hoping to earn a little extra money. His first two plays were Beauty is the World and Hot Milk at Three in the Morning. With Beauty, he received honorable mention in a writing competition as a freshman. After attending three different colleges, he graduated and changed his name to Tennessee Williams. Soon after, he decided to move to New Orleans to become a playwright. Upon living there, he quickly discovered that he favored the company of men. His work at this time would catch the attention of Audrey Wood, a literary agent who persuaded Williams to move to New York, the theater capital of America. He was in poverty, but quickly became rich when he moved to Hollywood where Audrey Wood landed him a job as a scriptwriter for MGM in 1943. Deeming Hollywood unsatisfactory for his kind of work, he moved back to New York, now with a bigger bank account. His Hollywood rejected script about his mother and sister turned into a play, The Glass Menagerie. It won critical acclaim but Williams was afraid of being a one-hit wonder. He moved back to New Orleans in 1946 to work on his next play, A Streetcar Named Desire, which was named after a streetcar that would pass by his apartment. Elia Kazan quickly signed on to become the director of the play and the film adaptation, hiring an almost unknown actor, Marlon Brando, in the role of Stanley Kowalski. You're gonna get the law, are you? Stella! Get feet on a woman and then call her back, cause she ain't gonna come. You're gonna have a baby. Listen, you're I hope they haul you in and turn a foul. Who's a lot of girls down here? You stick. Hey, Stella! Hey, Stella! 
The play became a smash hit and even a Pulitzer Prize winner. This caused the critics and audience to demand more greatness from Williams. Just under 40, he was America's most famous playwright. He started to feel the weight of it all and started hitting the bottle. He dealt with alcoholism in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, a play about a down-and-out football hero and his sex-starved wife, which garnered him another Pulitzer Prize. As he wrote more, he drank more, and earlier in the day. Once the 60s came around, the critics started calling him a washed-up has-been. He started taking sleeping pills. His brother Deacon brought him into a hospital to dry him out for three months, though it didn't last. After struggling with more poor reviews, drugs and alcohol consumption, he gave up. In 1983, at the age of 71, Tennessee Williams was found dead in the Hotel Elysi. He is buried in the Calvary Cemetery in St. Louis, Missouri by his beloved sister, Rose. Tennessee Williams was one of the most important figures to bring contemporary drama to the theater as we see it today. He brought a modern sensibility to traditional drama. A Streetcar Named Desire is a tragedy about a woman, Blanche Dubois, who cannot change with the times. She's a classic southern belle who was forced to leave her home after an affair with one of her English students. Her vanity is strong, but she is aging fast. Her husband killed himself for being homosexual. Her family slowly dies and whittles down the family fortune until she must move in with her sister and abusive husband, a Polish immigrant who eventually rapes her. This leads to her nervous breakdown, which in turn leads Stanley to get her committed to a mental institution. It follows a traditional set of structuring and approach with a modern take on the changes of society and the death of the American dream. Tennessee Williams was a well-known homosexual, and though he showed that side of him much more through his poetry and other writings, a few of his plays stand out as well. He is known to write characters after himself, such as Brick in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. The hard-drinking ex-football player is having a hard time coping with the suicide of his true lover, Skipper, another pro football player. Another example is the one act, Suddenly Last Summer, about Catherine Hawley, who seems to have gone insane after her cousin Sebastian, also based on Williams, was killed under mysterious circumstances. After taking a truth serum, Catherine recalls the incident of how Sebastian was killed. And they overtook him there in that... And you, Catherine, what did you do then? I heard Sebastian scream. He screamed just once. Williams used the imagery of cannibalism to represent consumption by the objects of his own sexual desire. While The Boys in the Band in 1968 was the first true openly homosexual play, Williams had shown homosexual characters many years before, with more real emotion and less stereotypical aspects. He was never known as a gay dramatist, nor did he want to be. Politically, Tennessee Williams was a radical when it came to social commentary. His plays did not sensationalize sex as most critics thought he did when first viewed to the public, though the Hollywood films liked to advertise them as such. Tennessee Williams' Pulitzer Prize winning play unfolds with a shocking impact and uncompromising realism that makes its author the most talked about dramatist of our day. He would show the spirits of American humanity gone dry, some of his later work being more symbolic of this, which is possibly a reason why the critics started condemning him. Tennessee Williams has left a legacy throughout the 20th century and beyond. The vitality and innovation of his work has yet to be matched. How do you want to be remembered as the man who has given us all this great theater, all these incredible characters, all these insights into ourselves? How do you want people to look back 
and remember Tennessee Williams. I haven't given that much thought. I hope they'll remember me <laughs> favorably <laughs> and for some things. Yeah.